So now we've looked how displacement varies with time, we can look at the velocity and the acceleration in simple harmonic motion. Okay, we've already said the acceleration is not constant. Um, the velocity clearly is not constant either. So we need to look at how all these things are related um, to time and then also how acceleration is related to the displacement, which again we've already said really to some extent. So here's our uh, graph that we had before. This is displacement against time. Amplitude is 5 just in this example. There's our displacement time graph. Our first job is to think what the velocity time graph might look like. Now there's two ways you can do this according to how confident you are with your maths. Okay, this is a graph, x equals a cos 2 pi ft, so this is displacement against time. Um, what you should all know is that the velocity of a uh, displacement time graph is found by getting the gradient of the graph. So we need to look for the gradient of this graph. Okay, so if you look at the gradient here, here's our velocity time graph. See so here, for example, the gradient is very negative. That's the maximum negative value for the velocity. At this point here, the um, velocity sorry, the displacement is maximum negative. If you think about the oscillation, the maximum displacement is where it stops at the end of the oscillation. So that's this point here on this graph where the velocity is zero. Here's our maximum positive gradient as it goes through the middle. Okay, that's the maximum velocity. So if you want to get this graph from that graph, in simple terms, we're just looking for the gradient. Mathematically, the way to get the gradient is to differentiate. Okay, so velocity is the differential of displacement with respect to time. And if you differentiate a cos 2 pi ft, you end up with minus 2 pi f a sine 2 pi ft. So you'll notice the minus sine graph, because this is this way up, not the other way up, like an ordinary sine graph would be. So this is an inver uh, a negative sine graph. The 2 pi f a comes out there. You can prove that by doing substitution if you're uh, doing a2 maths. I'm sure you'll be able to do that. If you're not doing a 2 maths, don't worry too much. We don't actually need this equation. Um, what we need to be able to do is to just work out the maximum value that v can have. Okay, So the equation that's on your data sheet is the maximum value for v. Well, if you look at this equation, the maximum value that sine can have is 1. Okay, It doesn't matter what's going on inside this bracket. The biggest value for sine will always be 1. So the biggest this can be is, if you like, minus 2 pi f a, but the minus is just a direction. Or if you like, you can call the sine minus 1. But 2 pi f a is a maximum velocity that you will get. So in the center of the oscillation, where the velocity is maximum, it will be 2 pi f times the amplitude. Okay, to go from velocity to acceleration, we do exactly the same thing again. Remember that acceleration is the gradient of a velocity time graph. So if we get the um, gradient of this graph, then we get this shape. Okay, so again, notice the gradient here is a negative value, maximum negative value, so that's down there. Here, the gradient of this graph is zero, so we're there. Okay, we can do the mathematical approach, which is to do acceleration is the differential of velocity with respect to time. Okay, if you differentiate minus sine, you go to minus cos, you take the 2 pi f out again, and you get 2 pi f squared a equals 2 pi ft. Okay, again, you don't need this equation. We just need the, um, to notice that the a cos 2 pi ft is where we started from, okay? So a cos 2 pi ft is just x. So this becomes minus 2 pi f squared times x. Okay, look at this equation carefully and you'll remember this is where we started from. The acceleration is proportional to the displacement and in the opposite direction. Okay, the constant of proportionality is this 2 pi f all squared. Okay, we can also get an um, a max equation. So again, the maximum value that this can have is when x is its maximum value. Well, the maximum value that x can have is the amplitude a. So a max is 2 pi f squared a. But notice that this is not the center of the oscillation where it's moving fastest. This is the end of the oscillation where it's momentarily stopped. Okay, because the acceleration is proportional to the displacement. So the bigger the displacement is, the bigger the acceleration will be. Okay, so we can link x and t by x equals um, a cos 2 pi ft. We can link v and t by this equation. If we um, multiply both sides by 2 pi f, we square both sides because sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. We add all this together. Okay, you can have a look through this. You're sure this will fascinate people of a certain mindset, but the rest of us might be happy just to get down to the final equation. This is how we relate v to x. 
Okay, so v squared, the velocity at any given point in the oscillation, is 2 pi f all squared times a squared minus x squared. Sometimes you'll see this with um, just v equals, obviously just get rid of the squared there and take the square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay, but this is the equation that relates velocity to displacement. Okay, so we're nearly there now. We can relate um, velocity, acceleration, and displacement to time. We can relate acceleration to displacement. We can relate velocity to displacement. Okay, all of that is summarized in these three graphs. Okay, with all the crucial equations. Okay, but you'll notice these equations aren't the equations of this graph. Okay, this is just a, a drawing of the shape of acceleration against displacement. So the one thing that we haven't done yet is talk about this graph here, acceleration against displacement. Well, acceleration against displacement must look like this. Again, if you go back to the definition of SHM, the, this is a proportional relationship, but with a negative sign. So the acceleration is proportional to displacement, but in the opposite direction, straight line graph going through the origin. Okay, so that covers all the various combinations that we need of uh, displacement, acceleration, and velocity against time, and velocity and acceleration 